I created a custom and super in-depth blog post prompt. I then took that prompt and I used it on the new GPT-5 and the GPT-5 mini models to generate a article. I then tested the article optimization score on New and Rider and I tested the AI detection score on originality.ai. And in today's video, I'll be revealing the results of this comparison between the new and highly anticipated GPT-5 models. Let's go ahead and get started. To do an apples to apples comparison, I'm using my tool WordRocket and I'm using my competitor analyzer tool. And this allows me to create a specific prompt based upon top ranking block sites. I went on Google and I searched up how to start and grow as a streamer. And then I copied over some of the top articles and I pasted into our competitor analyzer tool. I'm going to hit analyze competitors and our AI is going to go out. It's going to scrape each one of those websites and give me the top ranking factor. And then we're going to create a super prompt based upon this information. And that is the prompt in which we're going to be using. We're going to pop that into uh, GPT-5 and GPT-5 mini to assess the quality and the outputs in which we'll be getting back. So once it's finished, you can go ahead and you can select that specific um, scraped article and we can see the content type, the target audience, readability. We get an SEO analysis, right? Title optimization, strengths and, weak strengths and weaknesses, and then content gaps and opportunities. So this is all very, very useful information, which again, we'll use to create our own prompt. So the third article is completed. So I'm going to select all three of them and then click build super prompt. And now what's going to happen is, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to build a prompt based upon the top ranked articles for that specific topic. Our super prompt is completed. And as you can see, it is very long, very in depth, and it kind of tells the AI how to write. So target word count aim for 2000 to 2500 words, introduction, breakdown, table of contents, content requirements, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. So a very detailed outline of what to include SEO and keyword integrations, long tail keywords, tone and style guides, style requirements, visual elements, call to action, technical requirements, competitor advantage to emphasize and so forth. So we can see this is a pretty long and very in-depth and very effective prompt. Use this template for yourselves. Just head over to app.wordrocket.ai, hit the competitor analyzer, tab in the left hand side here and you can use this template for yourself. So now I'm going to paste in our prompt here. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be 2025 because we would like to have 2025 up to date information. So I've just sold it to write following the instructions above. Now let's see what we're going to be able to get back from GPT-5 and GPT-5 mini. So here's the content in which we get back. I had to tell it to rewrite in Markdown just because the Markdown content looked a lot better. And it was easier to read. So this is GPT-5 Mini, the complete streaming success blueprint from zero to pro in 2025. So not bad. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the article that we got back from GPT-5. So the complete streaming success blueprint looks like the same um, topic there. Live streaming is booming in 2024. Viewers, viewers watch billions of hours across Twitch and YouTube. You'll get practical streaming tips. Okay, so this seems very similar to what we got back from GPT-5 Mini. Let's see, in terms of length, yeah, I think they're kind of both the same length. So we get the table of contents there, and then we get the table of contents here, chapter one. So streaming foundations and platform, cho choosing the right platform in 2024, a comparison. So very, very similar here. Um, I don't know if it's because we did a side by side that we don't really see much differences here, but I mean, overall, they're both really good, right? But I would say if you're just creating content, like you're writing articles, maybe GPT-5 mini for your day-to-day -day is going to be much better because I'm sure it's less expensive. But if you're writing like, you know, really in-depth, you know, articles that are going to be flagship articles for your, you know, website or content pillars, then maybe you use GPT-5. But overall, if you take a look at these two, I would say that there is not a lot to really separate them. In terms of length, you are getting a little bit more length from GPT-5 compared to GPT-5 mini. But overall, I would say that they're, they're pretty similar in terms of output, at least when it comes to generating articles and blog posts. So let's go ahead and test them. Now we're going to test a couple of different things. The first thing that we're going to test is we're going to test the SEO score. So this is GPT-5 um, mini, so 2,500 words. And we're going to go ahead and do a scan on this. For GPT-5 mini, we had a 65% confidence that it's, that it's likely AI from originality.ai. So let's go ahead and do a new scan. So 65% is GPT-5 mini. 
the content from GPT-5 surprisingly has a higher AI score of 86% confidence that it's likely to be AI with zero matches of plagiarism. So GPT-5 was more likely to be AI compared to GPT-5 mini. But again, this is just one test. You'd have to do multiple tests to see if that um, holds true. So next, I went ahead and I told the AI to actually include these keywords that we got back from New and Writer into the article naturally. And when I did that, we were able to get a pretty high score of 85. And this is GPT-5. So GPT-5 definitely followed the instructions and we got a pretty highly optimized piece of content. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy over the content that we got back. I'm going to paste that in. It's a little bit shorter and we got a score of 77 out of 100. So GPT-5 did a better job at optimization because GPT-5 is a little bit more of an intelligent model. So it will be able to handle more complex tasks, which means like if you tell it to insert these, you know, these keywords X amount of times, it will do so naturally throughout the article. And it did a really good job. We got an article of 85 and the article quantity was about 4,500 words, while the quantity of the article was 3,500 from GPT-5 mini, and we got a score of 77 out of 100. But in terms of plagiarism, it was surprising that GPT-5 mini had a confidence score of 65% um, AI detection, while GPT-5 had a higher percentage of 85%. But again, I would say for most day to day writing, you can definitely use GPT-5 mini. But if you're writing more in-depth technical uh, content that's a little bit more heavy, then GPT-5 would be the better option for you. Hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I had a good time reviewing these two models and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.